Father's house, the home is. If you're able, won't you stand to your feet and let's worship together. We want to let you know that we're so glad that you're here. If this is your first time, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to anyone with the lanyards and we're more than happy to help you. Come on, let's worship. Listen, we're going to continue in worship this morning. Let's not stop it there. We're going to ask that God would pour out His Spirit over us, that His Spirit would move in this place, that it would rest on us, and that He would have His way here in His church. 
we are his people, amen. As the spirit was moving over the water, spirit come move over us. Sing that with us. As the Spirit, as the Spirit was moved over the water, Spirit come move over us. Come rest on us. Come rest on us. As the Spirit, the Spirit was moved over the water, Spirit come move over us. my heart. 
more time, you're still my first love. If he is still your first love and he is your everything, can you lift your hands up right now and continue to worship? Come on, say it like you mean it. Like he found you and he took you out of your misery. He bought, he bought you. He cleansed you. Come on. Jesus, I love you. Cry it out. serve here on the team. We want to welcome you. If you're a first time guest, thank you for coming. You should have got a connect card. If you didn't, there's a QR code that you can scan. We want to connect with you. We want to get to know you a little bit more and send you some information, update you on some things that are happening in the house throughout the month, throughout the week. Before you take your seat, can you turn to your neighbor and tell him, I'm ready. Are you? announcements to share. Music, if it could be a little quieter with the music. First of all, today's exciting because it's opening day. For those of you who may not know, this is our second service. That's exciting. First time doing it, and it's amazing. Team, everybody here, They've been, they've been working hard throughout the weeks, throughout the months in preparation for this, praying for every single person who has filled these seats right here. And we're believing God's gonna do something. Check it out. Sunday, January 29th, next Sunday, we have Party with the Pastors. Woo! Come on, it's gonna be a party. This is a great time for all new guests to meet and greet with the pastors and some other team leads that serve here at the Father's House, the Thomas and as well as they're gonna be serving in and out burgers. So you wanna RSVP, all new guests. There's gonna be a party with the pastors after each service, following the first and the second. But please RSVP so that we can get a head count on the burgers and make sure that you get fed. Who loves in and out Come on, a good double I double. Do. <laughs> Some chopped chilies on that. It's good stuff. Next, we have our small group fair. Who loves small groups? Who here is a part of a small group? Let's go, we got some people, I see some of my young adults here. Let's go. We have some small group booths that are gonna be set up Sunday, February 5th. You wanna mark this down on your calendar. It's a great opportunity to go up to those booths and get to know the small groups that are gonna be happening throughout the week, throughout the month, and the semester that's coming up. There's a bunch of different ones. We got youth, young adults, men's, women's, and a couple other ones that are gonna be launching out this year. So that is gonna be a good, fun time. And real quick, we're gonna have Eddie come and share something for the youth. Woo! Can we give it up for Eddie? Thanks, brother. 
Good morning, TFA Shinsomas. How y'all doing? You already know. One more time. How are y'all doing? Awesome. Uh, my name is Eddie. My wife and I, we lead the youth ministry here. And, um, you know, here at TFA and Thomas, we believe in pouring into the next generation, really building up the church of the future. So um, we meet as a youth ministry every Wednesday, uh, except for this Wednesday. This Friday, we have a special event. We're going to have a game night and uh, a potluck type thing. Um, so if you have any youth that are aged uh, 7th grade through 12th grade, please stop by the Connect booth after service. Sign up, give them your information. We'll add you to the contact list and we'll give you all that information for this Friday and every Wednesday moving forward. All right? Man, I wish I was still a part of the youth group. That's some fun stuff. They're gonna be hanging out. We'll check it out. Last thing, not last but not least, we just wanna thank you so much for your, for your giving, your faithfulness and giving. If you are a part of this house and you have called this place your home, giving, it's something that we do, it's a, it's a sacrifice, it's, a, it's an honor for us to do, to lay down this blessing before God, right? If you're new and, and you maybe have never partaken in this before, it's all right, you'll learn and we'll teach you and at some point you'll be able to partake in that as well. But we just wanna thank you for trusting God and putting him first in your finances. And there's a couple different options here. You can give online via text or mail, the good old fashioned way, putting the, the money in the envelope and dropping it in the box. And we just wanna pray for that real quick. Father, we just thank you right now for this offering. We thank you so much, God, for the opportunity to give, to lay this down before you, Father. Bless it, please. Would you bless the giver as well? In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, let's get excited for the word. Can we get you to stand up real quick and make some noise for God? Come on, let's make some noise. Hey, real quick, make some noise like the 49ers just beat the Cowboys. Come on. I know you guys are excited to watch the game, but before that, here's the message. Pastor Matt. Come on, y'all, one more time. Make some noise. I want to get y'all on social media. <laughs> Turn to two people and tell them you look beautiful today. It's okay if he's a guy. In a manly way, you look very beautiful. You guys could have a seat today. Welcome to the Father's house. Happy opening day. Are you thankful to be able to be in church today? So good to see you guys. I'm Pastor Matt, one of the lead pastors here at the Father's house. And uh, just want to thank you for being here to celebrate this moment and a brand new year. We had a phenomenal first service, just a powerful, I mean, there was, I don't know, tons of people gave their life to Jesus. The place was pretty full, it was pretty packed out. And this is pretty packed out too. So can you give it up for the Lord for that? We're just getting started and God is doing amazing things. Beautiful stuff. Um, right before we get into the word, um, you probably got a connect card. And if you didn't, you can raise your hand. I wanna take a moment, maybe about 60 seconds, and we're all gonna fill that out. Um, if you would take that connect card, and if you need a pen or you didn't get a card to fill out, would you raise your hand and one of our ushers will graciously hand you a pen or a pencil and you can fill that out on the front. It's, it, you can fill that out. It's going to give us um, an opportunity to connect with you during the week, tell you about some upcoming events. Um, we won't bombard you with too much information, but we do want to keep you in the loop of, about some exciting things that are upcoming. Also on the back, you can fill out the back of that card. If you have a prayer need, we want to pray for that. Maybe it's a miracle. Maybe you're looking for a job. Maybe you're having some issues in your family. Maybe it's for something to just find good favor with God and to prosper. Whatever it is, fill that out, that prayer request in the back, because during the week, our leaders and our team, our prayer team will be praying for that. Also, God's done something in your life. Somebody recently got healed. We had two weeks of pursuit, worship, and prayer services leading up to this day. We just come out of 21, day fat, uh, 21 days of fasting and prayer, and someone came two weeks ago to that prayer and worship service and said, I was healed of diabetes. You guys prayed for me, and I went back to the doctor, and he said, we can't find a trace of diabetes in your body. Can you give Jesus a shout out today? He's a miracle working God. Maybe you got a story to tell. We want to know. We want to celebrate with you. Write that back on the back of the card. Prayer request or praise report. Take another 30 seconds as the band continues to jam. Aren't they wonderful? Don't fill that out. When you're done filling it out, actually after service, would you do me a favor? Take it to the connect table in the lobby 
And um, if you don't know where that is, just ask the ushers on the way out. And then they'll direct you. And we got gifts waiting for you. Um, and we'll be uh, really appreciative if you could do that. Praise God. Can you give Jesus a hand one more time just because it's good to praise God? Guys, come on. Will y'all show some appreciation for our team up here? They're not going to... All you guys, give it up for our worship team. They did a phenomenal, phenomenal job leading us into God's presence. Thank you, guys. Also, all of our dream team, anybody who's serving, would you give it up for them? They have joined the team. They're serving some of them today. This is maybe the first time they're doing something like this, or they're very new to serving in ministry and church, and uh, we're, you guys are doing a killer job. You guys appreciate them. They're doing all this, for, waiting for this day for you guys today. Guys, um, and you, if, if you want, you can check a box. If you say, I'd like to get involved. I had a girl after first service say, I feel called to ministry. She, she feels called to ministry and she wants to serve. And so I told her, hey, let's, let's connect, to connect you to the team and help you with some next steps. So if you're interested on, in groups or um, getting involved with our dream team, serving on a team, whether you're musical or you're uh, techie and you want to learn audio or production, you like be like, I don't know a lick of that stuff. That's okay. Tell somebody, it's okay. <laughs> we'll take care of you. <laughs> we got you. We train. We are a training church. And our word for the year is multiply. So on every level, leaders, disciples, groups, ministries, and eventually campuses, we want to multiply. We're, we, we, start, we have two services to kick off the year. So we're already starting off with multiplication this year. Amen. So good stuff. You can be a part of it. And we'd love to have you turn into that connect card, guys. Are you ready for the word? Yeah. All right. It's kind of important, right? <laughs> Well, we're going to turn our Bibles today, and if you have your Bible, I still, I'm old-fashioned. I guess you could call this old-fashioned, but I got this Bible, this leather, 100% leather Bible. It's beautiful, isn't it? This is actually the New English Translation, which is pretty cool itself. So I'm, I have this today on me. On the screen, I, I believe they're going to put a New King James Version. Maybe you have a different version, but there's lots of good ones that you can check out. If you're not familiar with reading the Bible, you've never uh, read the Bible, you're new to it, you don't know where to start, we want to help you with that. But um, there's some good translations, NASB. NIV is very easily, easy, to, easy to understand. It's a pretty good one. Um, my favorite, New King James Version. Uh, NASB, there's different ways of communicating the same truth that make it understandable for different people. So check out the Bible. It's a good book to have in your possession. But there's also an app. Did you know there's a Bible app? There is, you got it? There's a Bible app. Here, here's the kicker. It's free. <laughs> It is absolutely free with multiple different versions and translations. So you can find one that you can understand well, that resonates with you, and get God's word. So you can pull up your Bible app, open the good old paperback or leatherback. Um, you can also pay attention to the screens, and we'll have it up there. We're going to look to the word. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. When you have that, say, I'm ready. We'll read the scripture, then we'll pray. We are a Bible teaching, preaching church. So when we communicate... Um, during our services, it's not, we, we don't want to just tell you pie in the sky or make people feel good. We do want you to feel good. <laughs> Hopefully truth makes us feel good, right? Um, sometimes God's word pierces my heart, but I know it's good for me. It's like vitamins. It's like broccoli. Any broccoli lovers? Okay, two of you. <laughs> if I throw some cheese on it, will you become a broccoli lover? <laughs> Really short passage, but full of power. We're going to start off a new series with y'all to kick off this new year, um, our first service, and it's called Believe. Can you say believe? Believe. believe. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, for we walk by faith. Say it again. We walk by faith. and not by. Very easy for me to do when I take off my glasses. Don't have the greatest of vision. We walk by faith and not by sight. Father, we're right now, thank you for the precious moments in your presence that we share together. I thank you for everyone who's here, everyone who's involved in our team and our, our, our lead team, our, our dream team serving in different capacities. Lord, they, they love people and they love you most of all. And that's why we're here today. Thank you for them. Thank you for every person who's walked in, whether they came reluctantly or with 
with excitement and curiosity. We're grateful for every precious person because we know that you love every soul here, their families. God, I pray, stir up faith in this house, biblical faith, Christ-centered faith, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen. You know, we've been celebrating a key historical, fig- historical figure in um, U.S. history, and that is Martin Luther King Jr. How many are grateful for the impact that Dr. King has had on our country, his legacy, and what that means for our whole nation, really, people of color, um, our children, for gatherings like this? There was a time in American history where this could not happen. This would not happen. But when you look around what's here today, look at, you see brown folks, white folks, black folks, all, come on, give God a little bit of heaven, amen? And I love it. It's beautiful. And we're a church that celebrates um, cultural diversity and different backgrounds and that the fact that Jesus brings hope to all, all who will receive it, amen? And Martin Luther King said this, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. Faith is taking the first step. Can can y'all say first step? It's taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. I wonder today, what is the first step that God is calling you to take? For some of you, you walked into the house today and that was the first step. You said, it's a new year. I'm going to get in shape. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to be a hunk, a chunk of masculine flesh. I'm going to get me a woman this year and I'm not going to make it hard for her to love me. (laughs) It's okay to keep it real, right? You're like, I'm going to get physically in shape, spiritually in shape, socially in shape, all that stuff, right? It's not bad to have New Year's goals and things you want to change and see God help you with and improve in your life. That's a good thing. That's a good thing, isn't it? But you walked in, and maybe that was your first step. You said, I want to get spiritually in shape. I want to grow my faith. I need to get stronger in my faith, and you're here today. And I want, to, I want us to, first of all, can we give it up for everyone who took that, who's taken that step? We know we're, none of us are at the finish line, but we're taking the step, Amen. And, and then I, I'm proud of you for taking the first step this year to start off right and being here with us today. But what is the first step? What is the next step for some of you? What's the step that you are deathly afraid of taking, but you know you must take? Let's talk about that for a moment. For one person, going to the gym is no problem taking that step because they have a rhythm and a consistency and a habit of doing that. They're in shape, it's easy, they're pumping iron, they're on that treadmill running 10 miles. But for some of us, we think about gym and we're like, oh God, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. (laughs) We think about gym, I heard this. I heard that Planet Fitness hands out donuts at their gym. I've never been there, but I gotta tell you the honest truth. That was appealing to me. I know, it doesn't make any logical sense. Why would you go to the gym when they hand out donuts? It defeats the purpose of going to the gym. Let me say, whatever it takes to get you in the gym. (laughs) But what's your first step? Strengthen your relationship with God. Maybe it's your marriage. You're like, we gotta grow. We gotta fall in love with each other again. I'm gonna be a better husband this year. What's the first step? What's the next step? Some of you got a dream in your heart and you're fearful of not getting the approval of your family or your parents or or someone else, and you know that God has put that in your heart, but you're not taking the first step. Sometimes the most important step and the most difficult step at the same time is the, is the. Some of you walked in here today, you haven't been in church in a year, two years, three years, five years, ever, and you took the step today, and I want to celebrate that fact because it shows that God is still believing in you. Talk about belief He's calling you. For we walk by faith, Paul the Apostle says, not by, not by sight. This is a simple verse and a very powerful passage in which Paul is delving into the subject matter of eternity and, and what this Christian walk consists of. What does it mean to, to, to live this life? And he kind of sandwiches this 
verse with that subject matter, talking about what eternity and having an a, 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 a eternal existence and going to heaven, having a new body and all that entails, but says that, hey, but I'm here, I'm here. And being here means I'm not in the presence of God in heaven, right? We all understand that. So to be absent, to be, to, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. But while I'm here, I'm not there. And though, so in this verse, he says, nevertheless, we walk, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Just because I don't see it with my physical eyes and I can't touch or taste the spiritual things doesn't mean they don't exist. Just because I can't see the prayer answered right now in this moment doesn't mean it won't be answered. Just because the God dream has not been realized and it's been 10 years or 9 months or or 20 years, just because I don't see my kids serving God, just because I'm still struggling with a habit or an addiction, just because I'm not who I feel that I believe God's called me to be, doesn't mean it can't happen. See, that's what faith is. Faith is a gift from God, and in whatever degree that you possess it, it's a gift that connects you to a reality that is not, you have not been introduced to yet. Faith is God's gift to get you to understand what's to come and what should be and what his will is. Is that okay? That's why we need faith. That's why the Bible teaches without faith it's impossible to please God because God would rather have you do a simple thing, a small thing, and be entirely dependent in faith on him than to do massive, have massive success in the world and have notoriety and money and wealth but have no reliance on him because he's not looking after what you can give. In the natural, he's looking for how much you trust in him. Without faith, it really doesn't matter to me. I don't care how good of a life you live. Because anything that you could really have can only be attained through faith in my son. And if you don't believe in the greatest sacrifice, what's it all worth in the entire scheme of things? I know for some, this might be a little difficult to process. It's like maybe you're here and you're like, man, I don't, I'm new to this stuff. This, I don't even know if I have faith. That's okay. Stick with us for the next several weeks. We're going to unpack faith. We talk about its power, its necessity. And we're going to believe that faith is going to come alive. Some of you here right now, you're walked in. You say, I barely made it. I, have, I barely had the faith to make it here. My car was breaking down. I was, I was getting slapped upside the head all week. You know how many messages I got, I got from people in just today, even today who said, I'm sorry. I was going to be there, but my car broke down. My dog got sick. An emergency arose. Let me tell you, there is a real war going on for people's faith. There's a real battle going on for the souls of human beings. And I'm here to, 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 to declare before this, this, this group of people, this beautiful gathering of people here in the house of God, that the battle is worthwhile if you persist and you trust in the Lord that he can prevail and pull you through no matter what obstacle you may be facing right now. He's a God of intentionality. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of, of plans for your life, for your family, for your future. He's a God of miracles. And we tap into the miraculous by faith. By faith. You know, God's so gracious that sometimes he's come through in my life when I had very little faith. How many can say, yeah, God's done some stuff. I have very little faith. Here's what we need to understand, that the effects of faith are disproportionate to the size of your mountain. Jesus said, speak to the mountain in the gospels, right? Talk to your mountain. What if they think I'm nuts? Talk to it. What if I look goofy? Talk to it. What if I don't feel anything? Talk to it. Talk to your mountain. Why do I talk to the mountain? Because sometimes the only way to kickstart your faith is to start to, is to, start to declare God's truth to the immediate circumstance in which you are imprisoned. Life and death are in the power and tongue. I'm not talking about name it, claim it, nab it, and grab it. Whatever you say becomes a reality. But I'm saying there there is power in words. 
Words have an influence. Some of you grew up feeling like you're stupid even though you have brilliance in your soul. And you never went after the degree. You never went after school. You never finished because someone told you you didn't have the mind for it. But God gave you a brilliant mind. And it's just waiting for you to step out and trust him and stop trusting in the words that were spoken over your life by your sons or your daughters, your parents or your uncle or your auntie or your teacher who didn't believe in you. Start trusting his word and his call for your life. So we have to start talking about it. Because I think that words have more power over us than anything. When I speak God's truth, something recalibrates in my mind and in my spirit. Because what you believe in determines your future. Who you believe in determines your future. And if I believe the false words spoken over my life from a parent, from a friend, from an ex, I am prone to live according to those words. But if my faith is in the one who speaks truth and life over me, that I am redeemed, that all things have passed away, that all things are made new, and if I walk in accordance with that, it could change everything. What if you could leave today with a new seed in your heart? That the man in this seat is not the man who walked over the threshold of that building door. That you might have walked in with baggage and pain and a past that you never want to rehearse or bring up and you're looking for a new start. But what if you could leave believing that you're new, believing that God's not done with you, believing that he has prepared plans for you that are greater than you could ever imagine and that your life is meant to mean something in this world. Stop living under the curse of your grandma's prophecies that called you into a place of imprisonment to unbelief and limitation. Start opening up the Bible. For I know the thoughts I have toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. And if you call on me and you pray to me, you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Start speaking the word of God into your life. Don't be the greatest opponent, opposition to your faith blossoming this year. The faith of yesterday will not get you into the miracles of tomorrow. What got you here may not get you there. Growth. He leads us from faith to faith. That means if I'm walking with Christ intimately, my, my faith in him should increase over time. My security in that faith, my conviction about him, who he is as a son of God, the veracity of the gospel message, the purity of his promises, the beauty of his bride, the local church. Are you with me right now? And the conviction that he has something he's called me to do in this world. Listen, you endured, some of you, painful loss, emotional, spiritual exhaustion, two years of pandemic. Some of you lost your job, lost a loved one. Some of us, we, 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 we wake up every morning thinking about what is no longer with us in this season of the journey. Yet, God's saying, just because you don't have what you had doesn't mean I've ever forsaken you. I promised in my word that I I would be with you even to the end of the age. And if you trust in me, if you follow me, I will never lead you astray. The path I prepared is not easy. It's not always cozy. It's not always comfortable. But it is worthwhile because there is no other way but the way of Jesus. And there is no other name by which men may be saved. The name of Jesus is, has been, and always will be the ultimate truth. And in a culture and in a society where we are impregnating the minds of our youth with false notions about God, faith, we have confused our future. The Lord shows himself strong. 
to say when people don't know what to believe anymore. When you don't know what to believe in more. Believe in me again. Not what religion told you. Not what a fallen minister told you. Not what human beings propagated, tainted by their own perceptions and fallen perspectives. But look to me. Look to the purity of my word. Pray to me. Talk with me. Encounter me. Dig into my precepts. Let me renew your mind. And let me rebuild your faith again. Somebody shall believe. Come on, we're a church that praises. It's okay to give God a hand praise right now and say God is good. Man, he's loud, mommy. Why is he screaming at us? Listen, tell your husband it's gonna be okay. <laughs> love you, bro. Love you, lo- love you, brothers. <laughs> I do want to note this. Paul says, look at that word. I got this wrong in the first, first service. But what's the second word on that, on that verse? <laughs> we. People start shouting, for. Okay, smarty pants. <laughs> for we walk by. Second word is we. We. Who's he referring to? We walk by faith and not by sight. Who is the we in reference to? Let me undo, this will not be popular, but come back, it'll make sense over time. There's this notion that we are all God's children. I have a dad, it's right here in the front. Show some love for my dad, this is my dad right there. Love you, Pops. Can I tell you something? He's my daddy. He's a good man. Compassionate, he'll treat you like a, one of his own. But can I tell you the reality? He ain't yo daddy. <laughs> He's my daddy, okay? He might love you like one, treat you, honor, honor you like that. It's a beautiful thing, right? But he's not everybody's dad. And our relationship will always be different from his relationship with anybody else. I have one dad. I treasure my dad. I treasure my mom. One mom. I have father figures, spiritual fathers. Like Paul said, you have many teachers, but you don't have many fathers. I'll be telling folks that too. I like that one. Every year you get a little bit older, right? You're a little less boy and a little bit more man. When you start calling someone son, that's how you know you're getting old. (laughs) Right? Other than your son. Like if you have a son, yeah, yeah, you can be like 20, 25 years old, you got a son. You're like, son, you start calling teenagers son, you're like, oh, shoot, I crossed the threshold of oldness. (laughs) <laughs> I'm, I'm getting there. When they start calling you OG, you're like, wait, whoa, hold on a bit. OG? Does, does this look like OG? Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> Shout out to my guy, Alec, who's emceeing today. He and my daughter, Sayla, they try to keep me fresh and, 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 and relevant. <laughs> no, you're not wearing your grandpa boxer today. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> He says, we, we is referring to those who are members of the body of Christ, disciples and followers of Jesus, those who confess, profess faith in Christ and declare him as their personal Lord and Savior. That's who we is. He's not talking to all the world. He's not talking even to the entire family. He's talking about those who say Jesus is my Savior and King. He says, we, because the Christian life of walking in faith is not one that can be done in isolation. Can you tell two people you can't do this alone? We can't do this alone, folks. The Christian life was not meant to be done in, a, in, in an isolated manner in our society, in our culture of, 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 of privatistic, isolated, individualistic, pessimistic, narcissistic, all the istics types of ways of living. We, 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 we don't even know our neighbors anymore, hello, right? but we're Facebook friends. I follow them on Instagram and I live next door and we don't even talk, right? That's how it is, it's a a different world. 
But here's the thing. When God transfers you, when you have faith, that initial seed of faith comes alive. Know this, that faith is a gift from God. Faith cannot be conjured up. You can't muscle it up in your spirit. It has to be triggered and sparked by the power of the Holy Spirit. And when that happens and you respond to that spark, faith is birthed in your spirit in Christ and you become a new creation. You become born again, as Jesus said. And people say, I'm born again. Or I want to be born again. I'm getting some of you are very close. And today God's going to draw you, pull you into the family in a good way. And, he's, and you, can't, you can't do this journey of faith alone is what we're saying. It doesn't matter how great LeBron is, any, any, any LeBron fans. Okay, two of you. Any Jordan fans. Any Kobe fans. Any Kings fans. Yeah, you're all Kings fans now, huh? This year, you're Kings fans. Where were you? Where were you? When they beat the Lakers, you're a Kings fan. Kings, king, king, he, and you do all the Christian stuff. He's the king of all kings. <laughs> really? Stop, stop, stop. You were a ghost. Where were you all those years? I know, you were there, you were there. You're faithful. Kings fans are the most loyal fans. They're all the pain and all the tears and all the cheap seats. <laughs> and all the turmoil, and all the crying, and the anger, and the divorce, and bitterness that it caused. You are faithful to your team. Shout out to you. I'm joking. Some of you are looking like, okay, you're mad at me. You're not coming back. Okay. Listen, as great as those, those players are, they can't win a game alone. Because faith thrives, blossoms, grows in community in togetherness. Faith without fellowship will soon die. See what happens when we get together in this time like this, in a moment like this? Alec comes up here, he goes, give God a shout of praise. And folks are like, yeah, Jesus! Go, go, powerful Jesus! Aha, uh -huh, some of you know, you know, you know, you know, you know where that's from. Back to a green white ranger. Seriously, though, <laughs> that hurt. Um, would you be doing that alone? Maybe. But something happens when people are like minded and they experience the presence of God together, right? What does it do? It stirs a boldness in our faith, right? It sparks something inside of us. It's a reminder that we are not alone. Because that's right. We were never meant to do faith alone. So one of the great attempts of the enemy during the pandemic was to rob us of growing, blossoming, thriving faith by shutting us up, locking us to our couches, and getting addicted to YouTube and Facebook. Because if he can't take your faith completely away from Christ, not to say that those tools are not useful, many people who have joined are here today because of those tools, amen? God can use them, and we, we're grateful for how God, that those can be redeemed for God's purposes. But here's the thing. He would rather have us, if he cannot completely obliterate our trust and commitment to Christ, he would rather have us locked away in isolation so we have no threat or cause no threat or danger to his kingdom. If you're going to believe, just don't grow in it. Because anything that doesn't grow inevitably dies. Anything that does not grow, is not cultivated, eventually will perish. So you hear people panicking because after the pandemic... The church world's like, man, where'd they go? We thought on day one, churches, right? All over the nation. We thought everybody's just gonna flock back in droves everywhere. There's exceptions for sure. Sovereign moves of God. 
But can I tell you right now, this is not to bring disheartenment or hope because I believe God is on the verge of revival. And he's raising up churches all throughout this city and nation that are going to pray for that and intercede for that. Are you with me right now? But there are churches that have shut down, closed down, because some were never able to recover because people wanted to stay on the couch. And can I tell you something? YouTube can get a message that could save your soul. The gospel is the gospel, however it's delivered. But YouTube cannot make disciples. YouTube cannot be your pastor. YouTube cannot be your, your mentor. YouTube cannot intercede for your soul. Are you hearing me right now? I love it. We use it. It's a tool for evangelism, not a place for discipleship. Discipleship and growth happens in community, in relationships, with our brokenness, with our weaknesses, with our flaws. We come together as a broken, bro beautiful bride, and we say, this is me. I'm a mess, but we're here, and we stand together. We fight together. We pray together. We forgive together. We weep for each other. We embrace one another. When one week we pick them up, when the other's week we pick them up, we sharpen each other. We edify each other. We use our collective gifts for the strengthening of the whole. We were never meant to do life alone. If you want to grow your faith in 2023, get a family, get a community, get a church, get connected, and build your life upon the foundation of Jesus Christ and his word, which is eternal, and you will see a growing faith in your soul. Somebody shout amen in the house right now. Don't get quiet in me right now because God's about to do something in 2023, and I believe it with all my heart that some of you are going to cross the threshold of faith that you have never crossed before. Some of you could barely believe for a meal a year ago, but today you're fed, you're clothed, you're in good sound mind. God's been doing miracles. He sustained you through the tough times. He's not giving up on you. Hold on to your faith. Build your faith, grow your faith, fight for your faith, share your faith, make it contagious. Raise your kids in the faith, build your marriage in faith, look to the future through the eyes and lenses of faith, open up your Bible and read with faith, listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit in the secret place with faith, get to the house with faith, expecting the move of God, invite your lost ones, your loved, loved ones who don't know Jesus to encounter him with faith, without faith it's impossible to please God have a little faith and you will see God do something beyond your wildest expectations go ahead give him a hand today I'm going to wrap this up we walk by faith I don't want to do this journey alone I wasn't meant to and today by God's grace and goodness my three kids are serving with me in the house of God I got my brother who's a pastor, my dad who's a pastor, my wife who's a pastor. I got my, my sister-in-law who's, who's, a, who's a minister, who served God faithfully for years. I got my mother-in-law in the house. I got my mother-in-law, auntie in the house. Are you hearing me right now? We serve together as a family, made up of families, reaching future generations because we started this by the grace of God, by faith in a word, faith in a promise. This is a year of harvest. This is a year of miracles. This is a year of someone's restoration. This is the year of someone's breakthrough. Don't look back. Press on. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. Some of y'all are like, man, he is loud. <laughs> Listen. If someone's about to get hit by a car on the road, you don't whisper them to safety. You shout to their ears are pierced with the truth and hope that's in your words. That's why I worship here. Because when it looked like this dream, when you would not come to pass because of the pandemic, it's time to detour, change directions, give up faith in what God said, believe feelings. Watch the trends. They closed down. They never launched. They quit. I'll tell you, can I be brutally honest with you right now? There are so many times when we had done all the work for our movement, Father's House, to our network, our churches, 
done everything we could. Dream big, believe big, pray big, gave big, sacrifice big. And it looked like it would never happen. My wife and I would have conversations. To the point where I was just like, I can't. There were times where honestly, it's you might think, man, you're a pastor, you're supposed to have faith. I know. But I'm still 100% human. <laughs> And the pandemic reminded me of that. There were times where I didn't think I had much faith left, left to give. I literally told my wife, I said, I have nothing left. Maybe the city doesn't need us the way we thought it did. No buildings will have us. No one will let us open up doors. The team we worked so hard to build fell apart and scattered. Everyone was moving. Everyone was in fear. I said, I don't know if I have anything left to give. I had to restore my faith. I had to believe more than what the King of Kings has said than what the news was telling me. I had to shut it off. I had to go away. I had to rest my soul. I had to be reminded. Come hell or high water. He is enough. Jesus. Jesus is enough. But if we lost everything overnight, as painful as that can be, overwhelmingly, Jesus is more than enough. And it's that faith, that seed that remained, that moved the mountain. And today on opening day 2023, two services in the presence of God in every beautiful space here sitting or serving I can tell you that faith faith can change things because faith is where God reminds you about what he says is true you bow your head with me today? I want to pray for you. Father, thank you. Thank you for this people. Thank you for your church. Thank you what you're, for what you're birthing in this season. God, I pray that you would spark within every heart faith, true biblical faith, Christ-focused, centered faith, Christ, the faith that's only given by you, the faith that's a response, God a faith that draws us into the journey of living for you with others, God. God, I pray for those who have lost faith. They feel like they've lost faith. They feel like they've lost hope. They feel like dreams and visions and calling are shattered. Restore it in them. Pray for the, the one who's, who, who needs faith for, for, for the family situation, faith for the future. They're struggling financially, God. They have a broken heart. They're, they're hurt. They're wounded. Whatever their condition might be, you are fully aware of it, God. May your word, may the truth, may God's word prevail in their hearts and minds today. And may the faith that is focused on Jesus bring them miracles, sustenance, strength, provision, salvation. If you're here in this house today and you say, I want to put my faith and trust in Jesus. I want to lead you in a simple prayer in which you, with, we will, those who are making the decision, we will declare with you, I believe, I believe first and foremost, the greatest faith is faith in, faith in Jesus. It all starts there. I believe he is the son of God. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he resurrected on the third day. I, will, I believe what the Bible says about Jesus. I believe he can forgive me of my sins and make me part of his family. 
If you say, I want that, Pastor, I want to commit my life to Christ. I want to follow Jesus, repent of my sin. Whether this is the first time taking this step of faith, or maybe it's the first time seriously doing it, no matter what your background, no matter how far or near to God you have been, so you say, that's me. I, or I, maybe you want to recommit your life. You say, that's you. On the count of three, I want you to raise your hand and wave at me. And I'm going to pray with you. One, two, three. Beautiful. Look at God. Look at God. Just leave it up for a moment. God's moving for a moment. No one's looking around. Just leave your hand up for a moment. We're going to pray in just a second. They're going to slip a card to you. This is an important moment. This is... This is life-changing for every heart making this decision. Anyone else young, doesn't matter who you are, old, broken, hurting, there's room for you in the kingdom of God, in the family of God, in the house of God. There's, there's a lady right there. There's a couple right here, the family right here. Beautiful. God is reaching out to entire families even. Married couples, singles, youth, young adults. God is bringing restoration to some hearts right now. Come on. Somebody say, I want to renew my faith in Christ. Raise your hand. You say, that's me. Right here in the front. We've got a couple right here. Right here. Thank you, guys. Beautiful, beautiful. I'm going to lead you just a couple minutes in prayer. Anyone else? You say, today I want to surrender to Jesus. Today I want to follow Christ to Savior and Lord. Families. Wow. There's a, there, thank you, Jesus. If you got a card, you can go ahead and put your hand down. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? Anyone else that says, I want to put my trust in Christ for salvation? Thank you, God. We're going to pray. Would you stand to your feet with me? Thank you, Jesus. And those of you who are already believers, already committed your life to Christ, let's support those who are making this decision by praying with them. Come on, everyone. Let's pray it out loud together. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, believe I believe you are the Son of God, you are the Son of God. and that you died on the cross for me and that you rose from the grave and you are alive sitting at the right hand of the Father. Forgive my sins. I turn away from them and I turn to you. Thank you for accepting me into your family and for bringing me home. In Jesus' name. Let me pray over you, Father, in Jesus' name. Everyone who's made that decision, I pray you're keeping power, that they would not turn away or walk away. Secure it in their hearts. Put your hand over your heart right now. I'm going to pray over those who say, if you say, God spoke to me somehow, put your hand over your heart. I'm going to pray that he would seal it. He would turn that into a fruitful walk. Father, right now, however you've spoken to people, God, right now, with those hands on those hearts, God, solidify it, make it clear, and they walk out today and into this new week, God, they will have a new hope, a new trust in you, a new, a new reliance upon you, new faith, new joy, new expectations, God, new dreams from heaven, God, that you would speak to them, that what you're doing here would not stay here. It would pour out into their homes, their families, their living room, their workplace, their office, their cubicle, their relationships. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. In Jesus' name. At this moment, the worship team is going to lead a couple times through in our worship. I'm going to invite some of our pastors and leaders to come forward to my right, left and right, right here. If you made that decision, you committed your life to Christ today. I want, I want to ask you if you'd come forward and let them pray for you, minister to you in that way, serve you that way. But maybe, or maybe you have a specific need. You say, I need prayer for my marriage. I need healing in my body. I need a new job. I, I, need, to, I need to grow in my relationship with God. I want to respond to that message that spoke to me. Will you pray that it would, my heart would be changed, my life would be changed, whatever it is, whatever you need. Nothing's off limits. They're here. We're here to pray with you. Would you come forward and they'll pray for you. And we're going to sing this song. And we want to thank you for joining us at the Father's House on opening day 2023. Come back next week. Party with the pastors. Don't miss it. Bring a friend. Bring two friends. We're just getting started. We love you all. Let's worship God. And we'll see you next week. If I help you, prayer team's ready for you. Bring your family, bring your, your spouse, bring your friend. If you don't want to come alone, you can bring somebody with you. If I have you, I have everything. But without you, I am nothing. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be.
the beat. 